Welcome to experiment number two, which is about projectile motion. Let's check the equipment that we have at first. Uh, here we have a recording paper, as you can see over here. There is a ballistic unit in this area, speed measuring attachment. So we are going to use this digital meter to check what is the initial speed of our projectile motion. We have a two tire platform support and a metal ball. And of course, our meter stick here. OK, so the main purpose of this experiment is to adjust the angle from here and then check how the projectile motion is affected by that. We are going to talk about the analysis of our data later on. But I would like to start by showing you the basic adjustments that you need to do at the beginning of the experiment. So here, you can see something like a well, recording stick, let's say. You can adjust the angle from here. It starts from zero, so it's set to zero degrees right now. So if you want to change this, you need to untie it from here by turning it in anti-clockwise direction. And each of these lines are five degrees. So at the beginning of the experiment, we need to start from 35 degrees, which is here. So once you are sure about the angle, you can rotate this clockwise and the angle will be adjusted. So this is the first thing that you need to do. After this, we have to make sure that the metal ball is situated very well on this magnet. So at first it's not going to be at the center, but you need to adjust it manually. Just a second. So as you can see here, the velocity is set to zero right now. It's not taking any measurements. Once we adjust the speed here, we are going to let it go. So when I take this in this direction, this is going to be projected in that way. It's going to leave a mark on this recording paper. And we are going to measure the horizontal distance from the initial point up to the final point that is projected on. So I would like to start now. First, I need to pull this backwards until I hear the click. So once I hear the click, now I'm ready to project it. But this is the step that needs careful attention. So here, there is a mark. This is going to be our point number one. So I'm writing one next to it because I'm going to need it later on during my measurements. And here, we can see the initial speed of this projectile motion. And its unit is in standard unit system, meter per second. So there is no need for any conversions. So in the lab manual, you are going to see something that is called phi. This is the angle that we have adjusted here. We have S, which is the horizontal distance from here up to this point. We have V0. V0 is the initial speed. We can see it on the digital meter. And in the end, at this step in the final row, we need to do some calculations. So for our measurements, we are only going to record initial speed and also horizontal distance. So for now, I'm going to write initial speed. As you can see, according to my data, it's 2.24 meters per second. It may be different for others. So I'm writing this for 35 degrees. It seems that I had 30 degrees as well. I have forgotten about that, but no problem. I can come back here and do it from the beginning. It doesn't affect my experiment. So this recording is for velocity. Sorry, it should come here, 2.24 here. So what is S? I don't know. I'm going to measure it later on. I had written one here, but I'm making it two because I thought it was starting from 35 degrees. But anyway, so let me continue. Now I'm going to come back to 30 degrees and check what is my initial speed for that. So let me adjust the angle at first. I'm turning this in anti-clockwise direction. This was 35. I need to go 5 degrees backwards, which is here. Then turn this in clockwise direction. It should be set. 
I will take the metal ball again and place it over here. But as I had said at the beginning, it needs to be adjusted at the center. Then when we click on reset, now it will measure initial speed again from the beginning. Okay. So as I had said, I have come back to this measurement. Now I am at 30 degrees. You can double check as well. And I will see what is my initial speed for this. So we are pulling this trigger backwards until we hear the clicking sound. Then we are firing the ball. Okay. Sorry. So I have marked this point as measurement number one. 35 was measurement number two. And this is my initial speed. So let me write that. For 30 degrees, my initial speed is 2.25. So I will write it over here, 2.25. So I'm not measuring S right now. I will do that when I finish everything up. That's going to be faster, I think. So let me come to 40 degrees now. We need to untie this again. So for 40, it will be set like this. We are placing the metal ball at the center here. We click on reset. And then we pull the trigger. Oh, sorry. We pull this at first and then pull the trigger. Okay. So this is measurement number three. You can see the initial speed here. It has changed to 2.26. So I will write that here. 2.26. Okay. How about 45? We adjust the angle to 45. We make sure that it's tight enough. Place the metal ball to the center here. Click on reset. Wait for the clicking sound and then pull the trigger. Okay. This is measurement number four. And our initial speed stayed the same. So please don't change the experimental data that you see. Don't think that it has to change always. You cannot control the measurements. You have to just write what you see on your screen. So 2.26. Okay, we have only three measurements left. Now I have to adjust the angle to 50 degrees. It's 50 now. I will place the metal ball at the center. Click on reset. After the clicking sound, I will pull the trigger. And this is measurement number five. 2.25 is my initial speed, as you can see from here. Okay. Now we have reached to 55 degrees. So this is 55. You know now what I'm doing, so I will not keep on repeating myself. Reset. This is 6. 2.24. For now, I'm not commenting about the data that I get. I'm not checking the trend. I'm just recording the data as I see them. So 22.24 meter per second. And now I'm at the last recording, 60 degrees. And after this, we will start measuring the horizontal distances. OK. Reset. And this is measurement number seven. And our initial speed is 2.24 meters per second. OK. So I have taken all the data sets for initial speed, but I haven't measured the horizontal distances. If you have noticed, 
How am I going to do that? Well, this is the logic behind. You need to place the metal ball back on here, on this magnet, and you need to make sure that it's adjusted well. I want to change this in such a way that I can take my measurement. Okay. So we are going to use the meter stick or meter ruler, whatever you want to call it, to measure the horizontal distance from the initial point that this ball is situated at up to these final points that I have labeled as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, until seven. So if you want, you can push this a bit back as long as you don't change the horizontal distance, but you need to be very careful while doing this. Okay. So the measurement should be taken from center of mass of this metal ball. I can't show it properly here right now, but this ruler needs to come approximately to the center of this metal ball, and the final point should reach up to point one here. So this is one of the sources of errors. While you are taking this measurement, you are going to have some errors for sure. It's impossible not to have errors in measurements. Okay, let's check. Where is one? One is here. So I need to come over here and check point one. It's 53. Is it? No, 52.2 centimeters. So I have written here in the table provided that S for the first data is 52.2 centimeters. It says meters here, so I need to multiply this by 10 to the power of minus 2. Or you can divide it by 100, same thing anyway. Okay, so for 35 degrees, we know where is point two. It will be better if you don't change the position of this ruler. Just come to point two, if you can. I can see where it is. And then check what it says. It says 56.6. So when you take the measurements with the ruler, you have to make sure that the position you are looking from needs to be aligned with the data sets. If my point is here, I can't look at this ruler from here or from here. I have to make sure that I'm situated parallel to this. So I come here and then I check what is, where is my data, okay? This is called parallax error anyway. If you want to minimize it, you have to make sure that you align your angles well. So what was it? I forgot 55, 56.5. Fifty-six point six. We will show these numbers in a bit on the Excel file. So for now, I just want you to see what's going on here. For 40 degrees, it's the third data set. So I need to come here and find where is number three. I can see where it is. 58.3. So 58. Point three. As I had said, these are in centimeters. I'm multiplying all of them with 10 to the power of minus 2. Because I'm taking my measurement in centimeters. Okay, so fourth data. Where is number 4? It's 64. 64 centimeters, so 0 0.64 meters. Okay. Fifth data set, I'm guessing it will go backwards now. Yes. So when you take your measurements, you have to make sure that this is aligned well, as I had said before. So this is 59.5. So 0 
Okay. The last two. So now we are at data set number six. Okay. Fifty six point eight, fifty six point eight, and the last one. Two point six. That's all. So during this experiment, there are only two measurement types that you need to take. Okay, one of them is the initial speed, which is measured from here. You don't need to do anything. You just record what you see on the digital meter here. For the distance, however, which is called s in meters, you have to use some techniques that you develop. So here. I have used my personal technique, but if you did your, this measurement on your own, you could have used some other method that wouldn't be wrong. So the important aspect here is to measure the distance from this point, the center of mass of the ball, up to the points that these metal balls are being projected on. So you need to be as precise as possible. Of course, we can discuss about the errors that I myself have done here. And when we do the analysis part, you are going to see the percentage error that I myself have anyway. So that's all that you need to do for the measurement part. Here we have one row left, if you can see. But this includes calculation. We need to take square of initial speeds and then multiply that by sine 2 phi. So we know what is phi. Phi values are here, 30, 35, blah, blah. We need to take sine of double of these angles and multiply that by square of this. There is an Excel file which is ready for data analysis. We are going to complete this last row here. Then we will draw our graphs and analyze and discuss what's going on. So here you can see the Excel file prepared for data analysis. These are the S values. So by S, I would like to remind you what we mean. S is the horizontal distance from initial point to final point. So we have converted all of the data sets into meters, as we had discussed already. And these are the angles in degrees. So while we are using Excel, you need to be very careful. You have to make sure that the settings are adjusted to degrees, not radians. So these are the initial speeds. The unit of this, let me write it here, is meter per second. But we didn't do any conversions here. This is already taken from the digital meter. Well, I had prepared a column which is square of these values. Because if you remember, we had left the last row of our table in the manual empty. So our main task now was to evaluate V square sine 2 phi. So we have the angles here already. We need to double these angles, take their sine values, and multiply it by initial velocity squared. So when this is carried out, these are the final results. You need to plot two graphs. One of them is shown over here. On y-axis, you have horizontal distances, and on x-axis, you have the angles that we have used. So as you can see, there is a almost parabolic behavior in this graph. And this is what we expect in a projectile motion experiment. In this second graph, down here, on y-axis, you have the horizontal distances, whereas on x-axis, you have this last column v squared sine 2 phi. So of course, because we have some percentage error, you can see the regression line is not going to be passing over all the data sets that you have. So these are actually showing you the error bars, if you would like to analyze them.
But we will do percentage error analysis in a bit. So when we draw this graph, the reciprocal of the slope of this graph is going to give us gravitational acceleration of the Earth. So this is the slope that we have. So when we take reciprocal of this, let me do it here so you can see it as well. So I want to find experimental value for gravitational acceleration. And for that, all I need to do is to take reciprocal of the slope that I can see from the graph, which is this number. So based on the data sets that I have taken, I have evaluated experimental g as 9.64 up to two decimal points in this experiment. So what is the percentage error? To find percentage error, first you need to know the theoretical, or it would be better to say, the expected value for the experimental quantity that you have observed. So here, G theoretical, let me say G theo, is 9.81. I'm going to accept it to be 9.81. And if you wish, we can write the units as well. And it's the same for this, of course. Meter per second squared. And to find percentage error, percentage error, you need to take the difference between experimental and theoretical value. So you can say equal minus this one. The order can be different. It doesn't really matter. In the end, you have to make sure that you take this result as positive. So you can put a modulus sign here and you can even change the order. But the only thing that is important is the difference of these two values that you see here. So after you find this difference, sorry, let me fix it. Okay. Once you find this difference, you need to divide the result by theoretical or expected value, which is here. I want it to be a percentage error. So let me multiply the result by 100. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a percentage error. Times 100. So based on the experiment that I have conducted, I have found the percentage error to be 1.7. So this is the experimental value, but it, it's not preferable to leave these many numbers, by the way. So if I were you, I would write the final result as 9.64. And you can take a note here to two decimal points. And the unit is meter per second square. And the percentage error is here. You can copy it here and paste. It didn't paste, of course. 1.7. I will make this two, two decimal points as well so that they match with each other. So these are the results that matter to us. Okay. So to finalize, we have conducted an experiment on projectile motion. We have changed the angles of projection and also the initial speeds were changed as you can see slightly and in the end we have observed the relation between all these quantities and also we have evaluated an experimental value for gravitational acceleration which is known to have an expected value of 9.81 meter per second square so based on the experiment, the methods that I have used, I have found 1.7 percentage of error. Of course, you can minimize this even further. It depends on your measurement styles, measurement tactics. And I have talked about a couple of them at the beginning. The way that you take your measurements from the meter ruler is very crucial. You have to be careful about that. What else? When you adjust the angles, you need to be careful. 
There are some other factors, but you can comment about them on your own. So this is all that I would like to say about experiment number two.